Ja. Mm. Okay. Yes. Mm, good. So let's um, take a look at. Uh, so which school we are supposed to look at today? This is the one, Tamasek. Okay, I miss yes. out on the Let me double yes. check. So Tamasek is the one for this week. <clears throat> yes. But actually, it should be Nicholas Girls. Tamasek was last week, actually. It's okay. Let me send it to my list. Um, share it in my list. Okay. Right here. Yeah. No. Okay. We should be looking. We should be looking at uh, St. Nicholas Girls today. Okay. St. Nicholas Girls. I think this school is near near my wife's house. I'm okay. Okay, so let's uh, get started. All right, so um, what is 90 less than this? Okay, yeah, correct. Okay, mm -hmm. okay so far so good. Mm. Seven. Seven, this question is not covered. Okay, so... Uh, this is not covered in your upcoming uh, PSLE, so we are not going to talk about it. Eight, uh, nine, 10, 11. 11, what's wrong with 11? It says a number of pupils form a star shape with the same number of pupils on each of the sides. Uh, let's see, form a star shape with the same number of pupils on each of the sides. Uh, okay. So there were 15 pupils on each side of the star. So <laughs> this means there were 15 on each side of the star. So 15. One, two, three, four. Can I miss out anything? Nope. Yeah. So. So uh, all the sides of the star, all the sides of the star are equal. Okay, how many people form? So two, four, six, eight, ten, right? So what's wrong with the answer? A number of from uh, oh. oh, okay. Am I right? Am I right? Your this is hundred and fifty correct or wrong? Is this correct or wrong? Are we are we supposed to are we supposed to account for this? Like this is the one and then this one. So what we are doing here is we have double count. We have double count the the pupil here. Hello, you, you need to unmute yourself. Just between you and me, it's okay if you unmute yourself for the entire lesson too. So, is 150 correct or wrong? Mm -hmm. I think 150 is wrong, right? Yeah. So the way so the way I look at it, if I look at it this way, right? I think we have so basically what we are saying here is. <clears throat> You have 15 pupils here, okay? So, yeah, hold on. You have 15 pupils here. So, you have to avoid making this mistake. What mistake is that? Is you can't, you basically, let's say if you have, okay, let's do a simple one first. Let's do a simple one first. Let me uh, open a PowerPoint. Okay, it's open. Do you know what I'm trying to say here? 
you need to avoid double counting the yes. number of people. So if so, let's say, let's say you have a star. Like this. So let's say if you have three instead of 15, let's say you have three on each side. So what this means is, okay, so you have three here, right? At the same time, you have three here, okay? So I'm right to say you have three here, okay? And you also have three here, okay? But but if we if we look at this, okay? If we look at this one here, basically you are talking about two sides and you have one, two, three, four, five. You have five tables, right? Instead of two times three, it goes to six tables. This is wrong, okay? The way we look at the question just now, so the way we look at the question just now was wrong. Let me, where's the star? Can you see the star shape here? Is there a star shape here? Male? No. Yeah, surprisingly, they don't have a star. Hey, you have. I need to move down, I think. Can you see a star? Okay, yes. Yes. So the way we look at the question just now was, so, I was assuming three here, three here, three here, three here, you know? Yeah, I was assuming this, okay? This is the wrong way to look at this question, okay? So I think this is a pretty good question, okay? This is not the right, okay, this is not the right way to look at this question, okay? So if you look at the question this way, okay, this way, so what you could have ended, what you could have ended up with, okay, is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have uh, three on each side. So you have ten side. So you end up thirty. And this answer is wrong if you do it this way. Okay. So basically, if you continue to 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 do this, okay, you will realize you will realize the right way to do it is okay. So now you can actually look at it. how many dots we have. So we have, um, yeah, these are different color. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So we are supposed to have 20. Okay. So similarly, for the question, for the question just now, so let me insert a star. Looks like I seldom make use of the, the shape star. That's why I don't know where to find this. Okay, so you have to account for the, so you have one here. So basically every joint, every joint here, you have one of the so let me okay. So every join here, I have one already, and then of course, in order to have hello, are you there? Okay, in order to have fifteen, right? So you have thirteen here, thirteen here, thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. So you have ten thirteens. So you have one hundred and thirty. And then how many red dots you have? Two, four, okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have ten red dots. So is the answer 140? Can you help me check? Hmm. Is the answer 140? Mm, okay, so yep, this is a very, very good question. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Um, next.
Yeah. So, so understood? Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm, 12. Mm, 12. Mm, 12 is not right. That's it. So the figure below is made up of a square. Maybe it's just a square. And two identical summation, which is here. And the area of the square is 64. So, yep. Yeah, so this is uh, one side. So this is four, so you have this, this is two, and of course this is two, okay? So uh, what is the area of the two semicircles? So these two semicircles, so two semicircles, so two semicircles give you one circle, and the, the radius, so, so I write down pi r squared first. Area of a, a, a circle is pi r squared. And in this case, the radius is one. Because it's two, this is two, right? So therefore, this is one. So pi one. So should be pi right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Mm. So in fact, um, the way you do this question is um, actually the 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 your solution uh, here shows shows um, I will say this is a uh, this is a this is a um a um i would say this is a um a bad habit yes this is a very bad habit okay why i say so why i say so because because um instead of instead of writing down this right okay so let, let me let me okay so uh what i'm what I'm going to teach you from now onwards, because I want you to, uh, because you have already scored um, ninety percent and above, okay, several times. So right now our goal is to try to get near the hundred percent, right? So in order to get hundred percent, you need to build a lot of good habits, okay? So this is considered a very bad habit, and if you keep having this habit, bad habit, then you're not going to score 100%, okay? So let me show you. These are some of the, um, the, the tiny little stuff uh, for the really, really good students, okay? Okay. Okay, so the way I look at this question is, number one, once I get the site equals to eight, I will write down eight, okay, on all the sites, okay? So once I write down the eight on all the sites here, so you will do what you, what you will do next is, so since this is four, right? So that's why you get two and two here, okay? So I'm not going to write down things like your working just now, like, okay, what, what you have written is this. And then you try to eat uh, minus four, and then you get four, and then you try to use four divided by two, and you get two, and then you're trying to do two times two times pi. Okay, you have done something like this, right? Okay, so this is like I say, this is a very bad habit. Okay, this is a very bad habit to have. Okay, the reason is first thing first, you you have written down all this, your mind actually doesn't register anything, okay? You have written down all this, but your mind doesn't register anything, okay? But instead of doing, instead of doing all this, if you have written down the eight here, okay? And you continue to write down the two, okay? And what you will do later on is, so let me erase this first. How come your camera is always on and off? Okay, so let me emphasize this point. So you, what you need to do is you need to write the numbers in the diagram. Then only your mind starts to register. Okay, you write any you you, you write the equations here or you write your solutions here. Your mind doesn't register. Okay, because your I think most of us okay our mind works better with diagram. So basically our mind works 
letter with diagrams. Okay, so if you know that our mind works better with diagrams, then why not you just write down the numbers all over here? So once you have written down this, okay, once you have written down the two here, okay, and then you will realize because they ask for the area of two semicircles. So like I say, two semicircles. So basically, I write down two semicircles is equal to one circle. So in order to find the area of one circle is pi r squared, right? So basically, I just write down the formula first because I say the formula will guide me. Okay, the formula will guide me. So what I need to do next is I need to find what's the radius. So if you look at this, if you look at this one, if you look at this, so what is the radius? Okay, so clearly, clearly you can see that the diameter is two. So this is this two is the diameter. Okay, so if you see that the two is a diameter here, why? Because the two is next to this line here and it's clearly diameter, right? And then therefore your mind will register two as the diameter. But now the question needs radius, right? So therefore you will somehow probably, instead of writing down the two, probably you will just continue to shade this part and tell yourself the radius is one. Therefore, once your mind register the radius is one, therefore you will write down one square. Then therefore you will get pi. So let's say the unit is cm, so you write down cm squared. Okay, so I'm trying to teach you some good habits. Okay, so how not to make mistakes. All right, how not to make mistakes. Okay, so this is the way you can actually try to avoid making mistakes like here. Okay, because you your brain won't register anything if you write like this, okay? Your brain will not register, okay? So it's much better to write down the numbers next to the diagram, okay? So when you have the visual, okay, plus, plus your understanding of the question, so visual, visual means you look at it, plus your understanding, uh, then you will not make mistakes like, like here already. You will not make mistakes like here already. Okay, so please please build all these good habits. Okay, so stop uh, having this. Okay, stop having this. All right, next. Okay. The figure below shows a rhombus, okay. Rhombus, so once again for rhombus, just to tell you the properties of rhombus. So all sides, if you don't know, so I just want to emphasize uh, once again, all sides are equal. Okay. And of course, opposite angles are equal. And of course, opposite sides are parallel. Okay. Next. And of course, you have to memorize the word rhombus. Okay. So sometimes they will ask you, name this figure. So they might ask you, name this figure. So if you are asked to name this figure and your sp spelling of uh, rhombus is wrong, so you are wrong. All right. 14. Okay. Good. 15. Okay. Very good. Okay. Next. All right, here, what is this? Okay, so everything is good. Hmm. Hmm, so what's wrong with this? So the container below is filled with this much of water. So what's the height of the water level in the container? Uh, so the base area is 200, right? So basically it's 200. So you have 1700 milliliter. So you divide. So you get what? So, you, okay, so you get 8.5, right? Okay. I don't know why you get this. Okay. Yeah. There is no way, there is no way you can get this at uh, 80.5. And are you allowed to use calculator for this, for this uh, paper? 
Anisha. Triple one. Oh, not allowed. But anyway, even if even if you are not allowed to use calculator, when you end up with seventeen over two, right? It doesn't make sense for you to have eighty, right? Because your your this uh uh numerator is seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it doesn't make sense, well. Huh? Oh, okay. So this is uh my is the it, this is a minor mistake, huh? <clears throat> Write down all the common factors of this. Uh, common factor, yeah. So this is the way, okay? So uh, write them all down. Then after that, then you just uh, pick the ones uh, that are common between these two, all right? Um, yes. And actually, there is another way. Like, there is another way, 28, 70. Let me show you. So you have 28, you have 70. So what you have is you have two. So basically, you divide by two, you get 14, you get 35. Yeah, of course, what you have here is, um, so 14 and 35, the common one is seven. So you have two, then you have five, right? Then after that, what you have is you have one and then you get two, you get five. So looks like this way can't, can't find, right? Oh, this way, okay. This way is not, not to find common factors, okay? This way is not to find common factors. This way is to find um, a common um, lowest, okay, lowest common factor. Okay, so low, lowest common factor is here. Okay, so this this way, if you do it this way, you, you can get the lowest common factor. Or oh, highest, I'm sorry, highest. Not lower, lowest is one. Okay, should be highest. Okay, but anyway, you will learn this. Uh, <coughs> you will learn this in your secondary one, but it's okay. So this is the correct way to do it. Yeah. So forget about this. Hmm. Okay. Good. Twenty three. Good. Okay. Let's see what's wrong with this question. The square below two sides of a triangle have been drawn already. Then next, uh, complete the drawing such that C A. So, uh, so I guess this side is drawn already, right? And uh, such that CA, CA is perpendicular to AB. So what you need to do is you, you need to make sure that this is 90 degree, right? You just have to make sure this is 90 degree. Then draw another three lines to form, uh, yep. So you, you did not do this part. Why? Uh? That means you missed out. Do you miss out this part? Or you don't know how to do this part? Hmm? This part. Do you miss out or forget or what? I don't know. How oh, you don't know. Okay, so let's look at it together then. Uh, let me get it out to the PowerPoint. So most likely your, your first, first part is correct. You just don't... You just have to make sure this is 90 degree. Okay. So over here is very hard for me to uh, measure the angle. So uh, just use a projector on your side to measure as long as it's 90. So your first part is correct. Donna. Let me move this away. Okay, good. So uh, CA. Okay, this is 90 already. Then draw another three lines to form a rectangle A, B, C, A, C, D. So A, C, D, E. And then you need to have a, you need to have a, uh, basically you need to have a D and E. Okay. To have a what? Um, rectangle, right? So, so what, what you could have done is this. So let's assume let me insert a, a rectangle into this thing first. Okay. Maybe of this size. Okay. So what I need to do is I just have to tilt this, you know. Right. So one of the side is AC, right? By the way, I don't know why you don't know how to draw the AC, DE. So let me just. Yeah, over here I can't be perfect, but just yeah. So just assume this is the one, yeah. 
okay okay so you either you can do it this way or of course you can also do it this way okay but it it looks to me it looks to me if you draw it this way this thing is going to be okay uh you can actually make it smaller also okay does it make sense now yes so yeah so yep yeah. so you can either do it this way i mean draw it this, this way or you can do it uh, on this side okay so uh i don't know uh why you cannot think of uh, uh the, the the second part here so next time if you cannot think of a rectangle right what i suggest you to do is um i think you have a long ruler of this shape i remember you have a long ruler of this shape right Okay, so what I suggest you to do is you could have just parked this long ruler. You just park this long ruler, just park, park it next to AC. And then somehow by parking the ruler next to AC, right? Um, it should give you an idea, okay? It should give you an idea how you can draw the uh, uh, this uh, rectangle. All right? Okay, can? Can or not? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, next. The graph. Okay, very good. 26. Mm. Let's see. So the average of four different even numbers is 22. So even number. So so the total is 88. So this is the total. So all the four numbers are two digit numbers. So the biggest is 26. Okay. So okay, what you need to do is so you have okay, you have this, you have this, you have this, and the biggest is 26. So like you say. Okay, this is a trial and error, trial and error question. I think we have um we have encountered such question before, but um something similar to this question. So now you need to guess. Okay, you need to guess. So remember the average is 24, okay, and the biggest is 26. So you have 62 to play with. So basically this three, right, is 62. Add up to 62. Okay, so now what is the smallest possible number? So you could have started with two, right? Okay. So if you test, because two is the smallest uh, even number, right? So, but over here it says what? There are two digit. Okay. So two digits. So two is impossible. So let's test 10. Okay. So if, okay. So basically, right? 10 is the smallest two digit number in this. I mean, 10, okay, I would say 10 is the smallest two digit number. But whether 10 is possible or not, I'm not sure. You have to test. Okay. I remember, I'm not sure if it is last week or the week before. Okay. There is a similar question like this. And you have to test whether the question, I mean, whether the the, the single digit number is possible or not. So now let's test for 10. So if this is 10, you have 52. So basically these two should add up, add up to 52. So if these two, right, they add up to 52. So what you have is, can you have two numbers that they add to 52? So we have 52. And then if you divide by, um, so you cannot have 26 already, 26 is the biggest, right? So therefore, the next biggest is 24. And if this is 24, you realize this is 28, right? Yeah, so 10 is not possible. So 10 is not possible, okay? So let's say if you have, you have uh, if you think that 10 is the number, you, you can actually plug it in and you realize that 10 is not possible, okay? So 10 is not possible, then I have to test with 12. So with 12, so I have 50 to play with. Okay, I have 50 to play with. So if 50 to play with, the like I say, the next biggest is 24, right? So 26, if this is 24, this is 26. Ah, I think 26 is possible, right? Because it says the biggest number is 26, ma. So now the question is, do you think it's possible to have 226 in this case? Yes or no? No. 
why not? Okay, then then now then I will ask why not? Why can't I have two twenty six? So let's say you have one, two, two, two. So can I say among these four, the biggest number is two? So among the bigger among these four numbers, the biggest is two. So can this statement be valid? Yes. Okay. So if this statement is valid for this, then can I say I have turn, I mean, can I also have 226 in this question? Yes. Yeah. So therefore, the smallest is 12. Can you help me check? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you can think of this question. Okay. Okay. Next. So yeah, looks like this. Um, this paper is a very, very interesting uh, paper. Okay, 27 is good. Next, 28. Mm, good. 29. Mm, what's wrong with 29? Okay, so once again, um, your way of writing down, I think it's pretty hard for the, for the teacher to give you marks, okay? Because you have no statement, there is no statement, what, it, what is this? Okay, so basically what you are trying to tell me here is, okay, let's say if I, I look at your question, I look at your solution from the perspective of, of the marker. So what you're telling me here is, okay, um, I have written down everything here, just find, just find the answers here yourself. Okay, so what you're telling me is this, by presenting your solution this way. Okay, so instead of doing this question this way, so I will say this is quite a bad habit as well, okay? So I want you to start to build up good habits, okay? So that you can get um, close to 100%, okay? So let's look at this uh, question together. So what it says, the figure below is made up of a quarter circle. So uh, this is a quarter circle, this one. Okay, then a triangle. So a triangle is S, V, X, and two equal So this is a triangle. And of course, this is equilateral. Yeah. So you can quickly write down 14, 14, 14, 14. Equilateral, right? So that's the meaning of equilateral, right? So I don't know why you never label 14 here. Okay. So in fact, in fact, it's a very it's a good practice to write down, I mean, or labeling, okay? It's a good practice to label the information in the diagram. Because like I say, uh, our mind works much better with diagrams. Okay. So the more information you fill up here. So the less you have to uh, digest in your brain, okay? You don't want to digest so much in the brain. You, you want to write things down so that you have less to digest in the brain, okay? So please label uh, and then um, write down the information given in the diagram, okay? Like over here. So even you can write down 14, 14 here, okay? And then it says so the, the parameter of the figure is 98, right? So, okay, um, 98. So, meaning, um, so the parameter of the figure, so the parameter of the figure is 98. So what you can do is, so you have 14, you have 14 here. So you have another 14 here. And you have another 14 here. You have another 14 here. Okay, very good. So this four, they contribute to the parameter of the figure. Okay, of course, this one, and finally this one also will contribute to the parameter of the figure. But right now, what we need to, what we can find out is this, okay? So to find out this, clearly here, this part is one quarter of a circle, right? So one quarter of a circle, so that means one quarter of two pi r. Why? Because we are finding parameter here. And this is the parameter, parameter of a circle, right? So over here, I continue. So I write down the formula first. So like I say, this is a good habit, okay? I write down the formula first. After that, this formula guides my working. So right now I have two uh, pi to be, 
to be taken to be this 22 over 7 radius. So the radius of, yeah, the radius is 14. I have written, I have written it down already. So what you have here is dung dung 2, dung dung 11, and dung dung 2, so it's 22. So this part is 22. And then what I need to do next is I take 98 minus, okay, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So this will give me 64. So 64 plus this, this will give me uh, 86. So 98 minus, no 98 minus 86 is 2, 12. So is the answer 12? I think so. Yeah. Yes. I don't know why you get this. So this is 64. So everything is right, but your this answer. So strictly speaking, uh, you will get penalized because your your working is correct. It means everything here is correct until the this one is wrong. So you will get marks for this part. But anyway, I still I still uh want you to do it this way, like write down the the information. Okay, I uh, write down the formula first. Okay, write down a formula first because it guides you. Okay. <clears throat> Next, 30. Good. So over here, so what's wrong with this? So Shin Wen should, would have enough sticks to continue with the pattern to make figure six. So let's look at this. Whether we have enough, I mean, whether this Shin Wen have enough sticks or not. Okay, uh, some hot and 50 stick. Some hot, some. 50. So he used the heart and stick to make three figures follow. Then he pasted the three figures onto a cut but Okay, one heart. Okay, good. Each seven be eight four. Okay, so um okay, how many sticks are you? One, two, three, four, four, or oh, four already, six already, eight already. Okay, good. So um basically this question wants you to um actually write down how the figure four will look like, right? And of course, okay, let me just do it uh, on PowerPoint. Hmm, good. So uh, to draw figure four, do I have a heart shape here? Yo. So basically figure four should have four, heart, four hearts. And then with this four heart, then you have a one, 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 then you have two, 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 then you have three, three. Okay, good. So then uh, let me insert the straight line. So they want you to draw the figure out. I think the figure should look like this. And then of course with this figure, then you go and uh, answer the question. Okay. So um, now the question is, they asked whether uh, Shin Wen would have enough, um, let me double check the question. Uh, would have enough sticks, sticks, right? To continue, or oh, pattern six. Uh. Oh, okay, good. So I need to, uh, continue. So let me get rid of this first. So I just need to continue this. Okay. So this uh this this figure will be figure seven. Right? Figure six, right? Then what you need to do is you need to count the number of sticks you need for this figure. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and then two. So uh, 12 plus two is 14. So basically you need 14 sticks, okay? And you need to count how many sticks you have used already. So you have 10, then you have uh, eight. So you have, uh, you have 18 already. Then uh, you need 14 sticks. 
to get uh, figure six, right? That's why you say can, right? That's why you say can, right? Am I right? Because this is 18, then of course this is 14, then add up together is 34, uh, 32, right? So you have what? You have 50 sticks. So 50 is more than 32. This should be your reasoning, right? Hmm? Yes. Then do you know what is the, okay, what? So, okay. Then if I say, the answer is no, cannot. So what's wrong with what's wrong with this way of thinking? Or what's wrong with this way of thinking then? I really love this paper. This paper is like uh, it tests your math knowledge at the same time, it tests your, I mean, it it tests uh Something like, uh, I cannot say it's an IQ question, but it has your, you should look at the question from another angle. You know? If you look at the question from this angle, basically you just read this and then you just write down, 50 is more than 32, that's why it can. Ah, this is one perspective. I think we have overlooked what? I think we have neglected, actually before we form the figure six, we need to form four and five first. So, the sticks used for four and the sticks used for five. And do you still have enough for figure six or not? That is the question you should ask yourself. Are you getting it or not? Hmm? Yes. Ah, so the question, right? Okay, by the way, the question asks, okay, this question is, I will say the question is very, uh, is very implicit. Implicit means not clear, not clear enough, okay? So the question actually wants you to think much more beyond 50 more than 32, okay? In fact, the question wants you to uh, consider your figure one, and then two, and then three, and you still need to build four and five, and then, do you have enough for six or not? So the question, so-called um, height, four and five. Okay, so we, we uh, did not, okay, if you think of the question this way, right? Just this way, right? I think, I hey, please put it on my cabinet, thanks. Uh, so if you think of it, like what I previously, uh, on this previous, previous slide, right? So you will have missed out the sticks used for four, the figure four, and the sticks used for figure five. Right? I, I, in fact, I can't blame you for thinking this way also. I can't blame you for thinking this way because uh, if, okay, I'm not sure if, I, I, okay, I, I'm not sure if I can, I, I, I can think of it this way also. I'm not sure, okay? Maybe yes, because I have not tried it, okay? So, um, yeah, so basically uh, this question uh, tells us um, we should think of the question from uh, this angle. We have to consider figure four and five. Then we build our figure six, all right? Let's read the question. So it says, would have enough stick to continue with the pattern. Hey, yeah, this, this sentence is important. Can you not see continue with the pattern to make figure six? Meaning you have to form four, five, then six. Right. Mm. Okay, so with with uh, uh, a little bit um, if you are little a little bit more cautious and you read into this sentence, then you will not miss out the sticks used for four, and you will not miss out uh the sticks used for five. Okay.
Okay. So, um, yep, like I say, this paper is very, very tricky and very, very interesting. Okay, next. Okay, paper two. Hmm. So far, so good. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, he says what? Uh, with center triangle, what is the square is uh, all unshaded? Okay, there's okay. Uh, you can't do this question because uh, nothing is here, and then uh, what is the square? Uh, is what is the square CDFG? Let me see. CDFG is unshaded. Oh, it says what fraction? Do you think you can do this question without them uh, lay, uh, giving you the, 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 the length of the sides? Do you think you can figure it out? They never shade. No need to shade what? Eh? C, D, F, G, ma. Oh, they never shade, oh yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh yeah, what is the square is unshaded? Oh yeah. Basically, okay, if you look at this question, unshaded is what? One, one over one, ma. I mean, nothing is shaded, ma. Right. Or zero. Uh. Unshaded is zero. Yeah, zero. If if they give you uh, like this. Okay. I just want, want, want to point out to you if nothing is shaded, so the fraction is zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But of course, I think um uh, I think they, they have they must have uh, shaded something then uh, but if if they give you the questions like this, and if they give you the question like this. Okay, so um, nothing is shaded, so the, the answer is zero. Hmm, question five. Ah, finally you get it right. Okay, yep. It's important to draw this out. Hmm, question six is good, question seven. Hmm, question seven is also good. Oh, what's wrong with this? Uh, this is also uh, this question. How come it looks? It looks so ugly. Okay. Mm. How how come they are not joined together? Uh, can I ask you? If they are not joined together, it's very ugly, you know. Uh, this is what. Let me get. Let me try to see if I can get the paper from the website. This is Nicholas 2019. Okay, let me stop sharing for a while. I go and uh, find this paper first. I want to get the original paper. So, twenty nineteen is Nicholas. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay, I can hear it. So this is question. Which question? Uh? Question what? Uh? Hmm. Oh, it's here. Oh, oh my God, how come it's still very ugly? So it says, what is the area of the shaded part? There is no shaded part uh, from my, my side here. How come, how come your side here have shaded part? Never mind, let me share the screen. Okay, let me open the preview first. Yeah, good. Let me share the screen. Okay. Uh, yes. Can you see your screen? Yes. So if you look at it, right? Over here, my paper here, nothing is shaded. Yeah, so you go down on this one. Yeah, nothing is shaded, right? 
like for your site. Yeah, this is the one, this is the one here. Let's go down. Mm. And your, your site is shaded. Uh. My site is not shaded, your site is shaded. Okay, but anyway, never mind. So it says some identical small right within a large has shown the length of each rectangle is what is the area of the shape of the time. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Let me try to put this side by side so I can know what is shaded, what is not shaded. Let's get this up. So the shaded part is here. This part is shaded. This is shaded. This is shaded. This part is shaded. Okay, good. Okay, back to the question. Okay. Uh, so the length of each rectangle is 24. How um, many rectangle here? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. But okay, can I ask you? Does the this one look like twenty four? No, right. This one doesn't look like 24 to me. Eh? I mean, the nine. Right? It cannot be 24. And this is a rectangle. So I'm, I'm wondering <coughs> how you can do this question also. Hmm? Is that, yeah, I miss out anything or not? Me or I did not miss out anything. Or did, my, did I miss out anything or not? So right. Never mind then. This question is not uh, uh doesn't look very good to me. So uh it's it's hard to it's hard to uh do then. Okay, so I uh, will skip this question. Some of it says are identical, and I'm not too sure if they are identical because you look at this one. Yeah, this one is this shape, then this one is this shape, and then this is the regular shape. So it's uh it's, it's hard to 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 do this question. Yeah, something is not right. Okay, never mind. So uh, we move to the next question nine. Hmm, question nine is good. Question ten. Hmm, question ten is good. Question 11 is good. 12. 12 is okay. What happened for first part? It says what? I think question 12 is a giveaway, I think. So Irene is now two R years old. So to Irene. Correct. This is the way to do it. She is 10 years younger than Kerb. Okay. 10 years younger. So Kerbin is older. Lah. So older by 10 years. Lah. So Judita is half the total age. So half the total age. Yeah. So you just add up. You by two. So you should end up with uh four. So it's uh, two R and uh, two R plus five. This will be J. Okay. So correct. Then uh, how old is Judita now? Okay. So no problem. Hmm? Let me see. Junita is half the total. Each of this, mm, let me double check, 4R plus 10 divided by 2, this is 2, then this is 5. No, 2R plus 5. Is it because of your unit? Uh, 
。OK 啊，没有错啊。是我说吗？我啥人是啊 ？Given by them。Can you help me check what's the answer given by them? So funny. They don't have answer. Hmm. Okay. Then never mind. Yeah. The answer is correct. Hmm. Good. Good to see your unit already. Okay. No unit. Give them a unit. Thirteen. Hmm. Uh. Uh. For thirteen, I don't see. Is there anything wrong here? Because I don't see it is marked. Can you help me out if if the answer is correct? For A and B, it's not marked here. Can you hear me? Check? Right. Oh, okay, correct. Mm. Fourteen. Mm. What's wrong with fourteen B? Okay, okay. I have fourteen B here. So the new question. Mm. Let's look at the. Mm, yeah. Yep. So this is the spelling for parallelogram. So M and P L. Okay. M and P L. Okay. So you have this. So this is a parallelogram. So this is ah uh, hundred eighty minus one o one. Then this is nine. This is eight. Okay. For parallel for for parallelogram, opposite angle is also the same. This is one zero. Then uh, M L R M M L. Oh, so they want to have this part. Okay. Then uh, you have oh, what else? Yeah. This is uh, which one is R U V R U V equilateral. Okay. This, so this is uh sixty minus. This is twenty two. Okay, then is this a nine? A tangle. Okay, so this is ninety. Mm, then you can figure out this one. Right then this is ninety minus twenty three. So this is sixty seven. So this is this is sixty seven. Yes. Then uh, this. Oh, I think this is also sixty. I think you can figure out this part already. Okay, so this part is, yeah. So basically, what you need to figure out is you need to figure out this part first. So this part, okay. First thing, this is a, uh, uh, is a quadrilateral. This one. Let me extract it out so you can see properly. Okay, this is unlabeled, so just let me just label it as uh, Z. Okay, so so this is a quadrilateral. So the internal, the sum of in, internal angle, uh, add to two hundred sixty for quadrilateral, right? So this, 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 they add to two hundred sixty. So what you need to do, two hundred sixty minus this sixty seven. Help me out. Two hundred sixty minus seventy one minus ninety minus sixty seven. So what do you get? Can you help me out with a calculator? Are you helping me, or are you still there? One thirty. Mm, good. So this is one thirty. So if this is one thirty, this thing this should be fifty already. So if this is fifty, so one o one minus fifty one o one minus fifty. So the answer is one. Is fifty one? Is the answer fifty one? Yes. Mm, okay. So yeah. So yeah. The the key is this thing. The quadrilateral. Then you need to get this angle. Okay. Oh, you get one, one three two. Yeah, that's how many one three two are. 
passes through seven. This one cannot be one, three, two, ma. I don't know how you get one, three, two here. Like. It should be one, just now what you say, uh? one thirty, yes. Just now you said one thirty, right? This one is, I don't know how you get one, one, three, two or so. This one, I don't know how you get one, 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 uh, one thirty two. Okay. This is 90. Okay. Yes. Okay, next. Fifteen, mm, fifteen is good. Sixteen, mm, sixteen is also good. Seventeen, mm, good. Yep, it's good to see. Uh, you are using this uh, method. Okay, the table method. All right. Mm, okay, so we have completed this uh paper. Okay. Uh, may I know uh what have you been doing in school these days? Hello, are you there? Unmute Nothing. yourself. Nothing? Revision? Nothing? Yeah. Revision. revision. So, yeah. Can I know, do you have any revision material from your school? No. Huh? You have no revision materials? No. Mm, cannot be. Uh, like, what, what your schools are doing, what, what uh, worksheets uh, your schools are doing, and all those. You don't have anything like that? Practice paper. Yeah, you have practice papers? Okay. So um are the practice papers with you? No. No, okay. Do you have any uh unfinished uh practice papers or unfinished question from your school? No. No, oh, okay. Then my so we will take a five minute break, then we will come back. I will uh give you some of the questions that I, I get from the internet and I'll just share with you. Okay. And, okay, can okay. so see you in five minutes. And plus, if you have your school materials, right, if you have any question from your school, which you want me to go through with you, please uh, uh, get, it, get them ready later. We can talk about it later. Okay? Okay. Mm, okay, good. See you in five minutes.
All right. Welcome back. If you can. Let me know when you're back. I'm back. All right. Mm, good. Okay, so let's uh let's start with a easier question first. Okay, this one. Uh I think it's a bit unclear, right? Can you see the question? All right, uh, let's, let me read it to you if you are a bit unclear. The figure is made up of a rectangle and a square, which is here. And it says the area of the square is five six of the area of the rectangle. The area of the shaded part is 45 cm uh, square. The unshaded part of the square is 10, of, 10 over 13 of the unshaded area of the rectangle. So what is the area of the figure? Yeah. Can you do it on a piece of paper? Are you doing it already? Yes. Mm, okay, good. Let's use this question to warm up your brain first. You drop off. Hey, welcome back. So what happened? You drop off the line. Hmm. Okay. Hmm, what's your answer? I haven't do it yet. No, oh, I haven't finished yet, right? I haven't started. Haven't finished. Okay, good.
Hmm. You shouldn't be taken this yeah, this long or so. So your answer is three one two point five. Okay, three one two point five. Okay, let's uh okay, let's uh erase your this three one two point five and let's um look at this together. Okay, and I'm not sure why you why you have taken so long to figure out this question. So let's look at it together. Oh, actually, I can get it to this PowerPoint. Just drag and drop. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the area of the square is five six of the area of the rectangle. So, so um, this is five u. So this is six u. So imagine this is one u. So this will be four u, and then this will be five u. Okay. What I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to to say is the empty part is 5u here. This is the empty part is 5u. And of course, this empty part is 4u. Okay. And then the uh, the shed, shaded area is actually uh, 1u. Okay. So therefore, you have a uh, 5u over uh, 6u. Okay. The area of the shaded part is 45. Okay. So uh, that means this area, 1u is uh, u is 45. Right. So therefore, you you can actually find out what is 4u already. So 4u is 4 times 45, which is, so uh, 4, okay, 180, then uh, 5u is, is equal to 5 times 45, right? So this is 2 to 5, okay? So therefore, this is 2 to 5, and uh, this is, um, this is uh, 180, okay? And this is 45. And it says the unshaded part. Uh, what is the area of the figure? I, I'm not even sure if if we we need to uh look at this part also. Because even without this this statement, the unshaded part, right? Um hold on. the unshaded part of the square is the unshaded part. That's it. Is it 10 over 13? Is it 10 over 13? Can you help me out? 180 divided by 225. Is it 10 over 13? Zero point eight. No, no, no. I want fraction. I want fraction. One eight zero divided by two two five. Eight over ten. Okay. Then ah, eight over ten. Okay. So what is the area of the cube? Uh, let me see. The area of the square is. The area of the shaded part is forty five. So the unshaded part of the square is ten over. 10. Did I miss out anything here? No, right? No one? No. Yeah, so, so in fact, right, this question, um, even without this statement, the unshaded uh, part of the square, the unshaded part of the square is 180, right? Therefore, the unshaded part of the rectangle is 225, right? Then, um, yeah, so I don't even need this part to find the area of the, the figure, right? The area of the figure, is simply 45, add with this, and of course, 
apparatus, right? I don't know what is this before and after concept. We don't need this part actually, right? Yeah, we don't need it. Okay, so the answer is, I don't know why you get uh, 312.5. Yeah, miss out anything? Or there is something wrong with this question? Because clearly this statement 10 over 13 doesn't make sense to me. Unless they removed it, like they removed this, um, but even they remove it, then it's okay. Ma. Yeah. Huh? Okay, so yep. Um, we don't need this part. We don't need this statement actually. We don't need this statement. And then without this statement, we can already find out the area of the figure. Huh? Okay, so the area of figure is you just add up this uh, three together. Okay, so next. Understood? Can you for this question? Mm, okay, good. Next. Mm. This one is more interesting. I think let me just make it bigger. All right, yeah. So I right, I hand over to you. Uh do this on a piece of paper. Let me look at just now the shaded area question. Yeah, I miss something while you are doing this question. Nothing wrong.
186150. Okay, let's look at it together. Oh, okay. 15086. Okay, can. So let's look at it together. 15086. Hmm. Thanks. Okay, over here. So uh, we are saying 150 and 86. Okay. So uh, AF use the same. Okay, they use a fixed amount. Okay. Uh, A takes 60 days to finish one bottle. Uh, each day, A use two fifth as much shampoo as. Okay, so um, how many days does it take to finish one bottle of shampoo? Okay, there are two ways to solve this question. So um, you can use proportionality, proportionality, okay? Or the other way you can use the formula, okay? I hope you know the formula is, uh, okay, in fact, they are talking about um, usage here, but you can also see it as, you can also use, see it as uh, the rate, okay, times the time, and then you will get what you will get uh, work done. Of course, over here, we are not talking about uh, how, much, how much work is done, but over here is how much shampoo is used, but you can also apply this uh, formula. Okay, so um, for A, if you use the formula, I'm going to use a method two, and uh, yeah, one bottle, and then uh, it takes 60 days, okay, for this A to finish, so the rate is actually one over 60, okay? So one over 60. Um, then each day, A uses two fifth as much, so, this is actually two fifth as much shampoo as uh, F. But so therefore, actually I could have, um, instead of using one over 60 here, right? In fact, I could have used a better number so that I don't end up with one over 60 because one over 60 is a fraction. So a fraction is harder to do questions. So let me show you what I can actually start with. So. I can actually assume that a bottle of shampoo is actually 60 U, okay? So if a bottle of shampoo is 60 U, so I can actually use 60 U divided by 60 days. So in fact, per day is actually one U, okay? For A, the rate is actually one U. And A uses two fifth as much shampoo as F. So this is actually two fifth of F. So one U is actually two fifth of F. So with this, you can find out that um, one U divided by um, two fifth, then you will get F. So one U times five over two, so you get 2.5 U, okay? So actually for F, it's actually 2.5 U uh, for the rate or you can see this as per day usage, okay? So once you get this, and then how many days does Fatin take to finish one bottle of shampoo? So one bottle is 60 U, right? So one day usage is 2.5 U. So 60 divided by 2.5. Let me quickly use my calculator here. 60 divided by 2.5. The answer is 24, right? Yes, it's 24. How come you get 150? Doesn't make sense then. You know why it doesn't make sense? Because, because, um, okay, 14, okay, in this case, right, F use, uses more shampoo per day. So if F uses more shampoo per day, so the shampoo will finish faster, right? So how can you have 150 days, right? So your 150 days doesn't make sense. Even 80, even anything, anything more than 60 days is not, it's not, I mean, it does not make sense. Okay. Am I right? Yes. 
Mm. So I don't know why you get uh, 150 or 8 or 85 or 86, but it doesn't make sense okay? mm. for 150 days. So this is, this is method two. Okay, so you can actually use method one. Do you use method two or use method one or your own method? My own method. Uh, but anyway, I think there are only two methods to solve. Ma. Either you use the proportionality or formula. Okay, so let me use proportionality to solve this question. Okay, so let me just carry off this first. Because these are the two concepts you can make use of to solve questions like this. Okay, so A is 60 days to one bottle, right? So with this, you, you understand that A uses two fifth as much shampoo as this, okay? So therefore you can actually find out the ratio of usage between a to F already, okay? So two U per day, so five U per day for F, right? So if you make use of this, so two U per day, two U per day for A, so 60 days, two U times 60. So the bottle is actually 120 U, right? So if you're 120 U, you use 120 U divided by your five U. So you end up with 24 days, right? Yeah. So this is another way to uh, figure out uh, this question using uh, proportionality. Am I right? Does it make sense to you now? Yes. Hmm. Okay. And by the way, let me emphasize once again, if you have questions like, let's say uh, someone takes some time to finish or use something, okay? This kind of question, right? Someone takes some time to finish or use something. This kind of question, two methods, proportionality or formula and the formula is always in this format work done is equal to rate times time okay so think of these two method okay let me go back to the question continue so uh, first question is 24 days next <clears throat> so it says what well, AF each started using a new bottle of shampoo on the same day. So uh, this is uh, 24 days. And uh, after Fatin had finished her bottle, so, um, yes, uh, she and Adi shared the bottle that A was using. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So if the day that Adi started using his new bottle of shampoo was considered the first day. On which day was the bottle used up on the day? Okay, nice. Okay, so <clears throat> um, this is A's bottle. This is Martin's bottle. So I think you need to use a timeline. Okay, um, so um, it will take 60 days uh, for the bottle to be finished. If A use alone. So this, the F will take 24 days, okay? So therefore, let's say um, first day, second day, third, 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 24th day. Okay, on the 24th day, so 60 days, right? So 60. So um, on the 24th day, um, this, the, the, um, F's bottle is finished. So therefore, starting from the 25th day, starting from the 25th day, they use the bottle together. So that means from 25th onwards, um, A and F use, um, use A's bottle together. 
Okay. So, how do you do such question? Okay. You can use the formula. Okay. Pretty simple if you use the formula. Okay. Let me just erase this. Okay. So, what you need to do is you need to find out um, how much is used. So, you need to find out how much is used yeah by a because only when you find out how much is used by a then you will know how much is left this is by a this is left for a and f right so therefore then you can find out uh, how many days um uh, this the, the, the remaining shampoo can last for a and f. Okay, so this is the concept. So let's find out um, from the first to 24th day. So it's 24 days. So um, the rate, okay, like I say, the rate is actually one over 60 for a. Okay, we use this um, rate before. So times 24 days. So you end up with uh, six is four, six is 10, and then it's 0.4. So the usage is actually 0.4. So you start with one and the usage is 0.4. So the left is 0.6 or 6 over 10 or 3 over 5 if you simplify it. So basically, 60% of the shampoo is left for A and F to use. right? So therefore, if you make use of this concept, um, A's rate is 1 over 60, B, oh no, not B, F. B, not B. How can I keep writing B? F. F's rate is 1 over 24, 14 days to finish. So they add up to, so that means the per day usage for these two is this. Okay, so what is left for them to use? 60%, right? So 2 over 5. Can you help me out? Can you help me out? So how many days? This three fifth of shampoo can last, the two of them. You don't appear in your camera. Are you still there? Hello, student. We need to unmute to speak up. 11 days. Okay, so 11 days. So that means this, the, the remaining shampoo can last the two of them 11 days. Okay? Can last them 11 days. So that means you're starting from 25th. That's the first day, right? So you just count to 11. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, uh, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Yep. So it should be here. So the question is asking what? Uh, the question. Eh? Is here. Uh, so I said. On which day was uh, the bottle shampoo used up completely? So, uh, it's the third, 35th. Okay. Okay, can? Okay, Ma. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will say, I will say, uh, this question is, uh, is, uh, I will say it's a very uh, typical uh, question that can come out uh, in your exam. So in your exam, you might not use the formula work done, but definitely you can actually use the proportionality. Okay, but of course, between, between proportionality and formula, right? I definitely encourage my student to use formula. Okay, why? Because, can you, can you not see? You just have to use the left, then you divide by the rate, and then you get the time. So if you use a formula, then this question is super simple. 
Okay. If you use proportionality or some other methods, I think it's harder to understand and it is easier to make mistake as a result. All right. So next time, if you get such question, someone like someone takes some time to finish or use something, please remember the formula work done is good to wait times time. In fact, the formula has this format wait times time. Are you getting it? Lima? Yes. Mm, okay, good. So good that we look at uh, such question. Okay, next, Shaiti. Ah, yes, immediately you get a similar question. Let me see the question here. 45 men working eight hours a day. Okay. Try this on a piece of paper. This is the easier ver version um, of the question just now. Get this question to I cannot solve. You cannot solve? Yeah. Mm, okay, good. So it's okay. So um, I will say, please, please pay attention to this type of question. This, this type of question can be a, uh, can be a, uh, can be a question that differentiates the, 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 the top students from the not so, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, the way to do this question is, I'm going to use uh, proportionality. All right, I'm going to use proportionality to solve this question. Okay, why this question is harder than the question just now? Number one reason is you have three. You have uh, three. Let me see. Yes. Um, let me see. No less. This question. This question is not harder actually. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, I thought it's harder, but it's not. It's not. So we, so if it's not harder, then I'm not going to use proportionality. I will use the formula. Work done equals to rate 
times time. Okay, so I write I write it down first, or probably I will use uh, both a combination. But let's see. So all I know is forty five men. Then are working eight hours a day can finish building a house in twelve days. So that means twelve days of eight hours per day. So basically ninety six hours. Okay, right to finish a house. So this is what I call you have three <clears throat> you have three parameters here or you have three matrix parameters or matrix it means you have three items to take care of in this question and now they ask how long will it take 60 men so 60 men how long right so they ask for this time to finish the same house Right, so that's that's it. So the change here is manpower. Okay, so if I'm not talking about this question, let me give you a simpler question first. Okay, two men. Okay, two days. They finish. Oh, two men is too little. Eh? Twenty men, two days finish one house. Painting, uh, painting one house. Now the question is, if I give you 40 men, how many days they can finish one house? How do you do this question? One day. Why one day? Okay. Mm. okay, good. So basically, right, I think the reasoning for this question is, as your manpower double, right? Your manpower double. So that means the time taken to finish the same task should be half, right? Am I right? So therefore you take two divided by two. So therefore one day, right? So if you understand this concept, manpower double, time taken shorten half. If you know this concept, then this question is super simple, right? So you just have to ask yourself, what is the, the multiple here for the manpower increase? Okay, so if you take 60 divided by 45, so 60 divided by 45, 60 divided by 45, okay, um, it's one and one third, right? I'm not, am I right? Can you help me out 60 divided by 45? What's the fraction? Four over three. Yeah, so four over three. So it's one, one and one third. So the multiple is, so the manpower actually um, increased by this multiple, one and one third. Okay, so therefore the hour should reduce by this multiple. Can you help me out? So 96 divided by this four over three. So what do you get? Seventy two. Uh, Tosa. Seventy two. Seventy two. So seventy two hours. So depends. Uh, whether the question wants you to express it in days or, so basically, it's, you can actually express it in uh, days or hours. So if it's in hours, it's seventy two. If in days, is unit divided by twenty four. So it's three days. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Yes. Mm, okay, good. So this is the, uh, the basic question, okay? There is a more advanced question, okay? Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a more advanced question of this type, okay? So let's say you have uh, 20 men, okay? Then uh, it takes uh, two days to paint one house. Okay, now the question is, uh, how many men? Let's not use men because men has to be a whole number. So um, let's, let's, uh, you have uh, 30 men. Um, it takes how long? To paint um, 
three. Can you try this question? This question is slightly different, but uh, the logic is the same. Okay, can you try this out? Four. Okay, never mind. Let's look at it together. I'm not sure, but let's look at it together. I will use the same logic, which is called proportionality. Okay, the method I'm using is called proportionality. Okay, so the in okay, so uh before you 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 find out the answer, what I want you to do is you want to figure out 30 men, how many days. You can finish one house. Okay. Why you want to find out this first? Okay. I will explain to you. So you know, you want to find out. Um, so instead of let me cover this question up first. Yeah, let me cover up this. So you want to find out 30 men, how many days can finish one house? Okay. So what you can do is so you're like you like I say your manpower is actually uh 1.5 times, right? Your manpower is actually times 1.5 times. So if the manpower increase 1.5 times, the number of days should decrease 1.5 times. Am I right? So it's 2 divided by 1.5. What do you get? Uh? 2 divided by 1.5. Can you help me out? Okay, so it takes forward three days. So now you can find out actually 30 men, how many days to finish three houses, right? So your this task is actually triple, right? So the task is triple, so the time taken has to triple as well. So therefore you get four days. Okay, can yeah, so this is the way to do this question all right if you have done it another way um i strongly encourage you to work out okay so that means there are two steps in this question okay first you find out this one first okay like 30 men um how many days to finish one house then only you look at how many days you can finish three houses the number one reason is like i say you have three matrix or parameters here okay so you don't want to okay if you look at the question the question is the question is here the question is you have change here manpower you also have change here the task okay so if you have two changes okay you have two changes Okay, for three parameters, I think it's better to fix, okay, to fix, fix it to one change first. That's the reason why I want you to do the first step. Okay, what is the first step? Just do with one change first. Just fix, fix the one house, okay, and then just do with one change here first. Okay, so in this case, there is only one change. The change is in manpower. So once you find out this one, find out this step one, okay, one change for manpower, then you find out the number of days. Ah, then it's easier to find out the three houses because the step two here is you once again, you have one change. The change is in pass. So let's say if you have completed this, you get three over, uh, you get forward three already. So can you not see that manpower is the same? And then this is just one change, right? So you always want to 
let's say you have three parameters, you always want to do with just one change. Okay, and then over here, one change. Okay, you don't want to deal with two changes at the same time. Okay, so basically you just break it down. Okay, you break it down to just one change, then find out, and then change to one change, and then you can find out. Instead of doing two changes at the same time. Are you getting it? Yes. Mm, okay, so um, this question here on this slide with two changes, this question with one change, okay, and the question here, this question, okay. I hope you can see that these three questions, somehow they are related, okay. Why I say they are related? Because they are dealing with um, someone do something within a certain time. Okay, so they make use of the concepts of proportionality or you can actually use formula. So it's really up to you uh, which method you want to use. Okay, and that's why I want to expose you to this type of question. And I also have taught you uh, two methods. One of them is proportionality and then the other one, the other one is formula. So you just use these methods uh, accordingly because method two formula is better for this type of question, okay? And then of course, when it comes to uh, this type of question, uh, method one is easier to solve, okay? So you have the tools, the first method, proportionality, and the second method, uh, formula, to solve these two types of questions, okay? Okay, Mark. Mm, but okay, all right. So um, uh, I think that's about it already. Okay, I think this question is uh pretty easy. You are asked to find the parameter of this thing, which which is quite easy actually. Then uh, let me see this. Uh, this question. Okay, never mind. So for the rest of the questions, I will uh compound it. Okay, so you so the homework will be you just do another set of uh, 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 another new set of paper, and then at the same time I'm going to compile uh, all the questions that I gather so far from the internet. Uh, probably it should it should not be more than ten. Okay, so I'm going to compile it and make it into a PDF. I will send it over to your mom, and then you just do the do the questions. So basically, one set of paper plus the PDF I'm going to send you. Okay, Ken? Okay, one more question. Uh, do you think, do, uh, are you, are you uh, overloaded with all your assignments these days? No. No, okay, good. Because uh, my understanding from Yixing is uh, she's pretty busy with uh, all her assignments. So, so I just want to understand, I don't want to give you too much homework until you are overloaded. So I just want to make sure that I give you the right amount of uh, homework to prepare you for the PSLE. I don't want you to over, I don't want to overload my students. Okay, I understand that if you get overloaded, then uh, you are under immense pressure and then you won't perform well. Okay, and so I just want to make sure I give you the right amount of work. Okay, so homework, new set of paper plus the PDF I'm going to send to your mom. Okay, Ken? Okay. Yeah, if there is no question, then I will see you in your house for our next lesson. Okay, if the COVID situation never worsened. Huh? Okay. Okay, so stay safe. Uh, yeah, stay safe and uh, I will see you in your house if everything goes well. Mm. Okay, ma. Okay, so thank you for your cooperation. I mean, your moms and yourself. So see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm, take care.